and welcome to a brand new video series on the respiratory system. Just like all of our other videos, half of these videos are released on YouTube for everybody to see, while the other half and over 200 exclusive videos on anatomy and physiology, as well as other topics, are available at mrfordsclass.net. Membership there allows us to continue to make these videos. So let's begin by taking a look at the introduction to the respiratory system. First of all, the primary function of the respiratory system is gas exchange. What we mean by this is that we are exchanging carbon dioxide for oxygen or oxygen for carbon dioxide. If you remember from cellular metabolism, this is going to start to tie together. Because, if you remember from cellular metabolism, the whole process of breaking down glucose and creating ATP, the gasoline for the body, requires oxygen. And at the end of the process, we're giving off CO2, carbon dioxide. So the primary purpose of the respiratory system is to provide the oxygen, not for us to breathe, and yeah, it's the breathing, but it's really not breathing that we're talking about. It is to provide the oxygen for the cells. So ultimately, this whole process of breathing, the all of this is simply to get the oxygen to the cells so they can do the whole cell metabolism thing, so they can do the whole cellular respiration thing, so they can break down glucose and create ATP. So that's kind of cool if you think about it. Now, there are some other functions of the respiratory system as well. For example, it allows us to speak. You are hearing me talking to you because of the respiratory system, as well as the miracle of video and camera and all that stuff. But primarily, I'm able to speak because of the respiratory system. It also allows us to smell things. So it is with the sense of smell, olfaction. It helps control the pH of the body. And it helps increase the interthecal pressure. Interthecal pressure is the whole bearing down thing. So if you've ever played a musical instrument in high school, say a trumpet, a tuba, a trombone, a clarinet, or any other instrument that requires you to breathe from the diaphragm, that's increasing interthecal pressure. And if you've never played an instrument, that's fine. You also increase your interthecal pressure every <laughs> every time you by the, totally kidding there it wasn't a real sneeze um, but that increases your interthecal pressure it also increases your interthecal pressure when you have a bowel movement and no I'm not going to mimic that for you so moving on general overview of what the respiratory system does from beginning to end what we wind up doing here is we're going to inhale air high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide. It's going to travel through the respiratory tract deep into the terminal portions, the end parts of the lungs. This is called inspiration. So if you hear somebody say, you inspire me, meaning you're helping me breathe in. So inspiration, you're breathing in the high oxygen, low in carbon dioxide, we hope. It's going to go down to the terminal parts of our lungs. Oxygen is then going to diffuse to the alveoli of the lungs into the blood. The alveoli are the functional part of the lungs. This is where gas exchange actually occurs. Everything else along the path is simply dead space. No exchange. It has to get down to the alveoli for the gas exchange to actually happen. Oxygenated blood is carried to the heart and via the systemic circulatory system to all parts of the body. If you're unsure what the systemic circulation or all that stuff is, please be sure to check out the cardiovascular series of videos that we have available. Oxygen is going to move from the blood to the cells and carbon dioxide and other wastes go from the cells to the blood. Now, where does this waste come from? I kind of gave it away at the beginning of this video. The waste is coming from the whole cellular respiration thing. Again, if you remember from cellular metabolism, we have glucose and oxygen, and it's going to give off carbon dioxide, it's going to give off energy, and the waste products are coming from the little factories in your cell producing energy. 
So that's where the waste is coming from. Your cells are creating the waste in the production of energy. That stuff is then brought out of the cell into the blood. So deoxygenated venous blood carrying its load of waste is forced back to the lungs where carbon dioxide is exhaled during expiration. So expiration, <sighs> breathing out. Inspiration <sighs> is breathing in. The anatomy of the respiratory system is composed of the following organs. The nose, the nasal cavity, the paranasal sinuses, the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the lungs, the diaphragm, the bronchi, the bronchioles, and the alveoles. We can divide the respiratory system into an upper and lower portion. So we have an upper tract and we have a lower tract. And there is some fuzzy area as far as where we divide these two apart. Some books will divide it at a certain area and other books will divide it at another area. So in general, the upper tract consists of the nose, the nasal cavity, the sinus, and the pharynx, while the lower tract is composed of the larynx, the trachea, the bronchial trees, and the lungs. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the upper respiratory tract.